Hello, hello, Crossroads Witches and other interesting magical beings. So happy to be here today. Today is obviously, let's talk about Wicca and folk magic, all right? I think sometimes folks, especially new folks, get a little confused uh, because we are both out of the same tree, but we are distinct branches. It's the best way I can explain this to it, all right? Folk magic is magic that has been practiced predominantly by working class, regular people through thousands of years, all the way back. Witchcraft roots traces itself back into shamanism, all right? Uh, whereas Wicca was um, founded or originated by Gerald Gardner. He started working it in the 1940s and in the 50s he uh, published a book all about the Wicca tradition. He used uh, ceremonial magic, he used some of Crowley's works, he used a little bit of a lot of things to create Wicca. It definitely does have historical elements and it also has elements of uh, folk magic, witchcraft, all right? And so I know for some folks, you're like, whoa, it gets confusing on who's doing what, when, where, and why, and everything. And so I want to talk a little bit about, I wrote notes, y'all know. I sat down after that video, and I sat down and just realized I had all sorts of notes on it. Um, and like I said, to begin with, Wicca is a branch of witchcraft, all right? It is uh, 1950s, it's, it's still new, but it is based on older ideas, all right? I don't want to, like, he made this up. Yes, he put older things together, uh, and through that, the Wheel of the Year was created with the God and Goddess mythology, all right? Uh, you find that the, the Wiccans lean into more of a ceremonial, a set structure, whereas folk witches are, uh, use what they have, use what they need, do it within whatever realm they are in, all right? Uh, for Wiccans, it's very much a god and goddess scenario. Within folk magic, it is a practice there is spirituality where each individual has their own relationship to divinity as they know it. That's why we have so many types of folk witches. All right, what else? Um, they have uh, they have the wheel of the year, uh, which is based on the god goddess mythology. It's a sexual union that explains how the god goddess moves through the year and her different manifestations. Um, the holy days within uh, folk witchcraft are so varied because it depends on our own personal traditions, our own cultures, it depends on our region. Within folk witchcraft, we typically open up a portal type. For some of us, you'll hear talking about laying a compass within my tradition. We discuss opening the crossroads. For us, it is about communing with. Um, within Wicca, they cast a circle. It is for protection to keep things in or to build things from. Okay. I hope I sort of gave some layouts because I know for it for new folks, like I said, there is so a lot of synchronistic similarities going on. And there was blending that occurred because within the, the folk witch tradition, um, we have definitely embraced some of the contemporary pagan, the modern traditions. Many of us, we go to pagan events, so we know the wheel. We participate. We think, I mean, I personally think it's a blast. I enjoy it going to some of the open events where they have the big pagan ritual and they do the mystery and all that and it gets theatrical. I, I think it's amazing. I, I enjoy the community. I enjoy experiencing a different expression of divinity, all right? Um, for me, this is where I talk a lot about what uh, other folks 
for me personally, um, divinity is the goddess, is the god, is beyond all of that. Divinity is everything and everything is divine. And that there are many different expressions of it that as individuals we relate to and they relate to us. All right. I do have a lot of divine feminine energy, a lot of different goddesses because I like them. Over the course of my 40 years, I've had journeys with different gods and goddesses and developed relationships with them. That is quite common for folk witches to be part of the pagan world, but not part of the pagan world. Also, like I said, with folk magic, this is where you get into regional flavors of us. All right, I'm talking from an American perspective. If you are in Britain, Australia, I was trying to think, oh, and that cute little witch in New Zealand. She was so cute. I got to chat with her. Uh, your folk magic is right at your dirt. The big thing I think that you find within the folk magic practice is that we look in our own backyards. Um, whereas you find within Wicca, they look to other places per se. All right. Uh, Folk magic, the use of folk magic is very practical, it's very intuitive, and it's ecstatic. When we talk about ecstatic, we are really having fun at what we're doing. We're really into it. We're in the moment. It's part of, what's the phraseology? Dancing like nobody's watching. All right? That is what folk magic is. And we also typically use what we have, use what we need. So we have a minimal, very minimum structure tools. Uh, we typically do have a working blade, a, a knife. We don't call it an athame, but you will hear many of us call it an athame. I call mine an athame sometimes. That is something that I have learned in contemporary pagan. But we do have a working blade. We use it for anything. We have that, this one sharpie thing does everything type attitude. We don't typically have different things. If you get into the British witches folk traditions, they do have that, uh, some different uh, tools that they are known for. Like I said, I'm speaking with an American witchcraft, and which is its own uh, funky gumbo. Again, very regional, all right, very cultural very personal and also uh what's going on on this side of the street may not necessarily be going on on the other side of the street two different systems are happening on the same dirt so yes it is okay to be confused all right we all start out that way you are no different if you are a new person and you're still like what does all of this mean i don't understand the differences just take your time take a deep breath and follow your own heart, all right? Um, both of these, the, the, these traditions in magic are, are valid. Both are very powerful for somebody, all right? And for you to find what is resonating within your own spirit, what you are connecting to, okay? Uh, another thing that you find a very big difference within the Wiccan realm versus within the use of folk magic is that we work with spirit realms actively. We, it's part of our, our uh, practice. Uh, necromancy, working with the dead, is normal. We don't think anything of it. That We're taught from the very beginning, you know, that we're not alone and how to learn to develop relationships with them, all right? Uh, we have a sense of animism, animis, animism. Spirit is in everything. There is, you've heard me talk about the spirit of the root. We have the spirit of the rock. We have the spirit of place. We have the local genii, the spirits that are in that particular area. All right. Uh, we are very much about developing relationships with ancestors, um, with the land, we also, a lot of us work within the Fey realms. We work with those entities that you find in liminal spaces. We develop relationships with them. Um, 
our natural landscape where we live is what we use, all right? I always talk that regional, cultural, I say it over and over and people are like, I don't have a region, I don't have a culture. Yes, you do. Another major area that you find of difference is within the Wiccan religion. They have a, a set of morals and ethics. They have the Wiccan read. Within folk magic, we have our own personal morals and ethics. All right. Uh, another thing is Wiccans tend to view uh, magic as black and white. Within folk magic realm, we have a tendency to view it as gray. You will hear, you know, magic is neither black or white. It just depends on the practitioner. You know, uh, the forces are there. It's not labeling them as good, bad, evil, dark, light. None of that. They just are. Whereas we find more of a categorization of pretty much everything in Wicca uh, as a way to try to relate to it. You know, and so I want, now that I've bleh, and you're like, well, what does that mean? What do I do? It means to understand your sources. If you are wanting to, un, you know, really get all up in Wicca, then you need to stay within Wiccan sources. Simple. Anything published by Llewellyn is probably going to be based within some sort of Wicca. And understanding how Wicca has evolved over the years, all right, it's no longer just an initiate only uh, magical tradition. It is now a worldwide religion. Uh, and there is a lot of good in it. I am, don't want to sound like I'm saying anything, you know, uh, negative at all, all right? Folk magic on the other side of that though, is this underlying doing something. Y'all grandmas, our great grandmas, our great, 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 great grandmas, we're all doing a little something. You know, it's those little pieces of everyday magic that we identify, start working with. And then as you do that, you see it more and you realize the whole world's magical. Everything has energy. And we can learn to get in the flow with it and sort of shift the current a little, so to speak, you know. Uh, tilt it in our favor just a tad is typically what you're finding. And also when I use the word folk magic, I'm using it in the broadest sense possible because I do want to say within like American, uh, American folk magic, you will find that we have a lot of different flavors, different folks doing things, all right? Uh, I need to sit down and write some notes up on that. I will say that if you are looking for a more comprehensive book, New World Witchery, Corey Hutchinson. He has an amazing book that was just put out here this past couple of years. Uh, absolutely well worth the read and understanding all of the folk magic that's uh, here in America. If you're looking for, you know, your folk traditions, your British folk traditions, um, there are several good books out there about that. Uh, I hope all of this bleh helps y'all just a little bit. Like I said, this is an addendum to a video I was just shooting and I started talking and I was like, I need to just say more about this because I do get folks that assume that I'm Wiccan. Please understand not all witches are Wiccan and not all Wiccans identify as witches. All right. Uh, I identify as a folk witch. I identify as a Southerner, a Southern conjuring, my conjuring side. Um, means that I work within the folk magic in which I was taught by my grandmother and, and her people uh, in regards to the use of the Psalms, all right? Uh, please understand that our ancestral knowledge is every family has their own little bits of doing stuff. So when you hear that, like, oh, he does it this way, well, I do it this way, and they do it that way, we're all telling you our magic, okay? Everybody gets a different recipe, you know? 
uh, and they tweak it over the years. Uh, Crystal, uh, who owns uh, Bridging World Botanica, she is a root worker. That's what her family was really up in, was the, the, the working of roots, using them for both medicinal and magical purposes. My folks were all, you know, the, the healing, laying hands on, all right? Uh, there is no folk magic system that has all of it in it. Uh, that's a fallacy, okay? You have to be aware of how regional our flavors are when you're looking at American folk magic. And always remember what's happening on this side of the mountain may not be happening on that side of the mountain. So where do you start? In your own backyard is where you start. Start by learning about your local history. Start by learning about the indigenous folk that stood on that land before you. All right? Start by learning the stories in your own personal families. And if you are being compelled or really have an affinity for a spirit, different uh, folks, entities, whatever, that's what you put on your altar and you start learning about that person. You start embracing um, their knowledge. That it's quite common. Many of us uh, have some of the, you know, you'll see uh, Marie Laveau, Caroline Dye, uh, Papa George, who else? Um, Doc Buzzard. A lot of times we put a little small something on our altar to honor the practitioners that came before us. And so learn some of the practitioners in your area. You'd actually be amazed, which that's what I'm saying. All right. I hope this rambling made sense. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Tell me what your thoughts are on this subject and how you in your own personal practice have dealt with these two worlds you know i'd really really like to hear and with that said i'm gonna tell y'all get out there have a bright blessed day go fly those brooms and as always amen bless be ashe and a bubble